Gold-bearing conglomerate. Formation and geological characteristics of gold-bearing conglomerates. Gold-bearing conglomerates are a special type of sedimentary rock in which valuable gold particles are embedded within a coarse-grained matrix of rounded clasts. These clasts, ranging from fine gravel to cobbles and occasionally small boulders, are typically made up of quartz, chert, and various stable minerals. The spaces between these larger fragments are filled with finer sediment, such as sand or silt, and the entire mass is cemented together by silica, iron oxides, or carbonate minerals. Within this cemented structure, gold occurs either as discrete grains, flattened flakes, or, in rare cases, as small nuggets. The formation of gold-bearing conglomerates is tied to high-energy sedimentary environments in Earth's deep geological past. Ancient rivers, braided stream systems, alluvial fans, and coastal shorelines were the key settings where these deposits accumulated. In these dynamic environments, strong water currents transported sediment eroded from surrounding highlands. Gold, due to its high density, 19.3 g/cm superscript 3, tended to settle quickly when water energy decreased, concentrating along with other heavy minerals like magnetite and zircon in low points of the channel bed or shoreline. Over time, Repeated flooding and sediment influx buried these placer-like accumulations under successive layers of sediment. Once deposited, the loose gravels underwent diagenesis, a process of compaction under the weight of overlying sediments, combined with chemical precipitation of minerals in pore spaces. This process cemented the grains together, transforming loose alluvial gravels into hard conglomerate rock. The resulting gold-bearing conglomerates often retain clear sedimentary features such as cross-bedding, imbrication of clasts, and fining upward sequences, which geologists use to reconstruct ancient depositional environments. From a geological standpoint, gold-bearing conglomerates often occur in stable cratonic regions, ancient parts of continental crust that have been tectonically quiet for billions of years. Many of the most famous examples are Precambrian in age, meaning they formed more than 2.5 billion years ago when Earth's atmosphere, oceans, and sedimentary processes were very different from today. The Witwatersrand Basin of South Africa is the most prolific example, containing over half of all gold ever mined in human history. These rocks, deposited in an ancient fluvial deltaic system, contain gold intimately associated with pyrite and uranite, reflecting low oxygen conditions at the time of formation. The gold within conglomerates may be purely detrital, eroded from pre-existing load deposits and transported mechanically, or it may have been secondarily enriched by hydrothermal fluids percolating through the rock after burial. In many cases, fine gold particles are found attached to quartz grains or locked within iron sulfides, making extraction complex. Alteration processes such as silicification, chloridization, or carbonate replacement may further influence the texture, hardness, and gold distribution in the rock. In summary, gold-bearing conglomerates represent the geological memory of ancient rivers and shorelines that concentrated gold through natural gravity separation and preserved it in a cemented sedimentary package. They are both a treasure trove for miners and a fascinating archive for geologists, revealing the interplay between sedimentary processes, tectonic stability, and the unique chemical conditions of Earth's early history. Major gold-bearing conglomerate deposits around the world. Gold-bearing conglomerates are rare but highly significant in the history of mining, with certain deposits becoming legendary for their scale, geological uniqueness, and economic impact. These deposits are found on almost every continent, yet the most productive examples are concentrated in ancient cratonic regions where sedimentary basins preserve thick sequences of conglomerate from deep geological time. 1. Witwatersrand Basin, South Africa. The Witwatersrand Basin is without question the most famous and prolific gold-bearing conglomerate deposit on Earth. Discovered in 1886 near Johannesburg, this Precambrian basin has yielded more than 50,000 metric tons of gold, over half of all the gold ever mined in human history. The gold occurs within a series of sedimentary layers known as the reef horizons, which are made up of quartz pebble conglomerates interbedded with sandstones and shales. These were deposited around 2.9 to 2.7 billion years ago in a vast river delta system bordering an ancient inland sea. 
Gold in the Witwatersrand is intimately associated with pyrite and uranite, indicating deposition under anoxic conditions before Earth's atmosphere became oxygen-rich. The source of the gold is still debated, some geologists favor a purely placer origin, while others propose that hydrothermal fluids contributed to secondary enrichment after burial. The Witwatersrand Basin is not only a geological marvel but also a socio-economic powerhouse that shaped South Africa's history and economy. 2. Tarquayan Conglomerates, Ghana Located in West Africa, the Tarquayan gold-bearing conglomerates are part of the Paleoproterozoic Birimian supergroup. These deposits consist of quartz pebble conglomerates and sandstones that were laid down in fluvial and shallow marine settings about 2.1 billion years ago. The gold is detrital in nature, with particles derived from weathered auriferous quartz veins in nearby highlands. Tarqua remains one of Africa's most important gold mining districts, hosting both large-scale open pit operations and smaller alluvial mining activities. The gold is generally free milling and occurs as fine grains within the matrix or attached to quartz pebbles, making it easier to extract compared to some other conglomerate hosted deposits. 3. Yacobina Basin, Brazil In northeastern Brazil, the Yacobina Basin hosts a sequence of Archean to Paleoproterozoic quartz pebble conglomerates that have been mined for gold for decades. These deposits are thought to have been formed in ancient braided river systems flowing across a stable craton. The gold particles are fine-grained and are often found in association with pyrite, arsenopyrite, and minor amounts of other sulfide minerals. Yacobina's geological setting is comparable in some respects to the Witwatersrand, though on a smaller scale, making it an important analog for studying Precambrian gold deposition. 4. Venterstorp Contact Reef and Other South African Deposits Outside the main Witwatersrand Basin, Several other South African gold-bearing conglomerates have been mined, including the Venterstorp Contact Reef. These deposits share many geological similarities with the main Witwatersrand reefs but differ in age and tectonic setting. They illustrate how gold-bearing conglomerates can form under a variety of sedimentary and structural conditions. 5. Other Notable Occurrences Smaller but geologically interesting conglomerate-hosted gold deposits are also found in Canada's Huronian Supergroup, Ontario, Australia's Bendigo and Ballarat regions, Victoria, and certain parts of India's Darwar Craton. Although these deposits are far less productive than the giant African examples, they provide key insights into the global distribution of ancient gold-bearing sedimentary systems. In summary, the world's major gold-bearing conglomerates tell a story that spans billions of years and multiple continents. While each deposit reflects the unique geological conditions of its own basin, they all share a common origin in high-energy sedimentary environments that concentrated and preserved gold in the geological record. Studying them not only aids mineral exploration but also deepens our understanding of Earth's early crustal evolution. Mining Methods and Economic Importance of Gold-Bearing Conglomerates Gold-bearing conglomerates, due to their geological setting and physical characteristics, require specialized mining methods that can vary dramatically depending on the depth, thickness, and structural complexity of the ore bodies. Over the past century, these deposits have been extracted using both surface and underground techniques, with some of the deepest mines in the world developed specifically to reach conglomerate-hosted gold reefs. 1. Mining Methods a. Surface, Open Pit, Mining When gold-bearing conglomerates occur close to the surface, open pit mining is often the most economical method. This involves removing large volumes of overburden to expose the ore horizon, then blasting, loading, and hauling the rock to processing facilities. Open pit methods are particularly suited to deposits such as the Tarquayan conglomerates in Ghana, where the gold-rich layers are relatively shallow and continuous. Advantages of open-pit mining include high production rates and the ability to mine lower-grade material economically. However, it also requires significant land disturbance and is typically limited to deposits that are not deeply buried. b. Underground mining In most famous conglomerate-hosted deposits, such as the Witwatersrand Basin in South Africa, the gold-bearing reefs lie hundreds to thousands of meters below the surface. 
Accessing these requires deep underground mines, with vertical shafts descending more than 3,000 meters in some cases. Mining at these depths demands sophisticated ventilation, cooling systems, and ground support to manage high rock pressures and extreme temperatures. Stoping methods such as long wall stoping, cut and fill, and breast stoping are employed depending on or body geometry. Because conglomerate layers are often thin but laterally extensive, precision mining is critical to avoid excessive dilution of the ore. C. Hydraulic and alluvial reworking. In certain areas, ancient conglomerates have been partially eroded, releasing their gold back into modern river systems. These secondary alluvial deposits can be mined using dredging, sluicing, or high pressure water jets, hydraulic mining. While these methods target unconsolidated sediments rather than the hard rock conglomerate itself, they are indirectly exploiting the same ancient gold source. 2. Or processing. After extraction, the conglomerate rock must be crushed and milled to liberate the gold particles from the surrounding matrix. Gravity separation methods, such as shaking tables and centrifugal concentrators, can be effective because of gold's high density. In some cases, cyanide leaching is used to dissolve fine gold particles, particularly where the gold is locked within sulfide minerals like pyrite. In deposits with coarse gold, gravity recovery may account for a significant portion of total production before chemical treatment is necessary. 3. Economic Importance Gold-bearing conglomerates have had a profound impact on global gold production and the economies of their host nations. The Witwatersrand Basin alone has produced more gold than any other mining district in the world, transforming Johannesburg into one of Africa's largest cities and shaping South Africa's economic and political history. In Ghana, the Tarquayan deposits have been central to the country's position as one of the top gold producers globally, providing employment for thousands and generating substantial export revenue. In Brazil, the Yacobina Basin plays a key role in the mining sector of the Bahia region. Beyond direct economic benefits, these deposits have also driven infrastructure development, from railways and roads to power generation, in historically underdeveloped regions. Mining companies often invest in community programs, although the environmental and social challenges of large-scale mining remain subjects of ongoing debate. 4. Global Resource Security and Future Potential because conglomerate-hosted gold deposits are often extremely old and geologically unique, they are not being replenished by modern sedimentary processes. This means that existing deposits represent a finite and irreplaceable resource. Advances in exploration techniques, including deep seismic imaging and 3D geological modeling, may yet reveal undiscovered conglomerate gold systems beneath cover rocks. As ore grades decline in the most mature mining districts, the industry may increasingly turn to smaller or deeper deposits, applying improved mining and processing technologies to keep operations economically viable. In essence, gold-bearing conglomerates are more than just geological curiosities, they are the backbone of some of the world's most important gold mining regions, responsible for shaping entire economies, influencing settlement patterns, and driving technological innovation in mining. Their combination of geological complexity, mining challenges, and immense economic value ensures they will remain a focus of both scientific study and industrial exploitation well into the future.